Hey everyone. Hey guys. Welcome to the Adobe Fonts Show, episode 24, Create a Hand Lettering Look with Fonts. We were a couple minutes late because our internet went out, but we had to persevere and be here for you. We have a great show and it's Women's Takeover Week on Adobe Live. So I have Molly as my co-host today. Hello. Welcome. Thanks, Ari. And I'm Ari, the library manager for Adobe Fonts. My team works with all the Foundry partners that design the fonts that are included in your Creative Cloud subscription. And we currently have over 150 partners and consistently add fonts to expand our library. And, and I, Molly. <laughs> I'm Molly. I'm an associate product manager for Adobe Fonts. Uh, like our excellent usual host, Ben, I started out in support for many years, answering all the different font related questions. Uh, but these days I write all the copy and all the documentation you see on the Adobe Fonts website, as well as represent Adobe for Adobe Fonts in the type community. So yeah. Awesome. Um, for those of you that are new to our live stream, Adobe Fonts is a library of over 20,000 fonts that you can use with your Creative Cloud subscription. Um, these fonts can be used for personal and commercial projects. So if you're not sure where to start, check out recommendations uh, on fonts.adobe.com and activate a few fonts. And here on the Adobe Fonts show, we talk about all things fonts and have great workshops with your professionals in the type world and our partners. And if you like the show, subscribe to Creative Cloud on YouTube and follow Adobe Fonts on Behance to be updated on all future episodes. Exactly. And we have a lot of people that joined us today. Just want to say hi to Cody, who's our moderator. Thank you. Andreas, Sean, Rick, Megan, who's also on our team. Camille, who's also on our team. Noorsh, welcome back. The gang's all here. Yeah. And let us know where you're from in the comments and any questions that you might have throughout the thing. Um, we have a poll for you today that we'd like to get your answers on. So are you participating in the 36 days of type? If yes, say one, if two, I mean, if <laughs> no, say two. <laughs> you got it, keep going. <laughs> Let us know. Yeah. Um, I participated a few years ago it was a really fun thing. I don't think I could do it every year because it's quite a commitment. Um, there's a lot of letters. <laughs> yeah, definitely something I would see myself starting, but like not finishing in classic Molly style. <laughs> yeah, and there's no shame in starting. I'm the kind of person that I'm like, I said I'm going to do it, so I have to do it. Um, but this today is the letter C, so it's the beginning. So I think we see like a lot more submissions at the beginning of the alphabet. So I'm excited to see how many we have. There's a lot of people who say three. <laughs> I guess that's the option they've created for themselves that's um, observing. So that's yeah. good. That's the best, just enjoying what everyone else is doing. Jess says, yes. Jess, you should post your Instagram in the did. chat. She was saying hi to someone. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, she posted it. Yeah. So it's your first time. That's awesome. There we go. Annika is doing it for the second time. Cool. Let us know how you think of ideas for each day because that's tough. Camille's right. By the time it gets to Z, it's probably like the lowest number of submissions. <laughs> Poor Z. Yes, maybe I'll just do it for Z, like one day. <laughs> I'm here, I did it. Penny is doing it for the first time, awesome. So I'll just show you in case your answer was two, um, I'll just jump over to my screen and we have the 36 Days of Type website up. So you can learn more about it here, how to participate and what it is. And then there's also the Instagram where they aggregate all of the submissions that they really liked and they also have hashtags so this is kind of a curated set but if you go to the hashtag you can see everything that people submitted um, but these are really cool i was 
impressed. Yeah. People coming strong so, out the gate. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. This one's animated. No pressure. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> flowers. I do love flowers. As you can see today, I'm wearing all my flower stuff. So let us know if you're participating and looking forward to seeing all the submissions. So every time we do these lives, we show you a little bit about our service in case you're new to Adobe Fonts. So I'm just going to jump over to our website. And one of the things I wanted to show you was that you can click on this tab here called Recommendations. And it's a great way to start out. Oh, gosh, now it's telling me to sign in. <laughs> Wait, let me, you'll get a preview of what we're going to be doing later while I sign in. Just close your eyes. <laughs> close your eyes. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Luckily, sometimes signing in is quick. So if you go to this tab called recommendations, it will give you some suggestions of things that you can find on Adobe Fonts. It's really taking, doing weird stuff. I'm going to go back to this tab. It got very excited by me signing in. Um, it's a great way to just discover new things without having a specific like font that you're looking for, a specific style. Yeah. You can just see what is being suggested to you based on a few factors. Yeah, they break it down by trending and you know um, picks from our team. So it's a good Let's starting point. Works. Yeah. Oh, there, there it is. we go. Hello. Okay, calm down. So yeah, there's these different titles here. For example, if you go to trending, you'll see um, things that have been activated a lot recently or used a lot recently or tags that people are clicking on. So that's a good way to see what are other people using and what can give me some inspiration. Um, we also have new it which is everything that's been added recently. And you can see the images that the type designers have created for these to give you a little more insight in how they can be used. And the best part is if you like something, you can just click activate right here, right on that image. And it takes it straight in your app. You yeah. don't have to go to another page or anything. My favorite so. tab is the for you tab, because to me, it's like a visualization of all the different kinds of type that I enjoy looking at. <laughs> um, yes. So it's pretty cool. And you can tell that I've been using a lot of handwritten and script fonts. So definitely shows I'm not using text typefaces right now. <laughs> no. All not right. on this so, live stream. <laughs> not today. Today we're doing all about customization and hand lettering styles. So I can take you back to Illustrator where we, we got a tiny preview of what we're doing today. And just wanted to say hi to anyone else who joined in the chat. We're really starting now with the topic of the day. We are working on how to create a hand lettered look using fonts. So sometimes you might get a brief or you might just want to do it yourself. Like it has to look hand done. It has to be very customized. And maybe you aren't experienced in creating hand lettering yourself, whether it's on a piece of paper or in using vector vectors in the app. So what can you do? Well, there's a lot of fonts you can use to really give you that feel. So let's wait for Illustrator to let mm -hmm. me zoom in. <laughs> so I was thinking just as a way to think through this, we'll have a project, we'll have a winery that wants us to create a logo type for them and a label for them that they're going to use on their label. So that's just our inspiration. And we're starting out just to show you a few things when using script fonts or fonts that have a lot of customization features in Illustrator, what are kind of the things that you can use? What are your tools? So we have this font, Madelinette Grand. So I'm just using Molly's name as an example. It's great because it has a Y at the end and you can do so much. I did that, that. on purpose. 
<laughs> yeah. So one of the things we can do, like super easy to look at all the glyphs in the font is go to type and then go to glyphs and then check out everything that we have. Sometimes I like to do this and just use the zoom out tool and see how much am I working with? Sometimes there's thousands of them in there and you're like, wow, there's so much in here. Um, so it's a good way to just get a feel for what the type designer included in here. You can also highlight a specific letter and then say alternates for current selection. And then you can see how many M's are there, for example. Um, and yes, this font is from Tarte Workshop and you can find it on Adobe Font. You can search for it um, under the Find More tab in Illustrator, or you can just go to our website and search for it. So let's say, ooh, let's use this M and we've achieved that through going through the type panel, but we can also look at this open type menu right here, this O, and it gives us a lot of options. For example, standard ligatures, contextual alternates, discretionary ligatures, swashes, and if they're not, um, if they're grayed out, it means that they don't exist in this font or in this selection. Yeah. So that's just a good rule of thumb of you select something when you see, oh, it does have standard ligatures. Um, it does have swashes. For example, I click swash and it shows me all the swashes. Yeah, you can get um, really crazy have. with it and apply all the swashes and confuse all your readers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that's not what we want to do. We want to get a little feel of hand done. Um, and one of the things that I always do when I'm using a font that has open type features and is a script font or any kind of hand lettered is that I pay attention to what the first and last letters are and make sure I'm using the right um, ending or terminal letter as it might be called. So the Y, this Y that I'm using right now, that's the default one. That could go in any part of a word. And that's why it has an exit stroke that's just straight. But if I want to really customize this and make it look like I did it myself and it's hand done, I'll add a terminal exit stroke like that. So it makes it so much more special. Yeah. And I just wanted to show this one too, since we were talking about hand, getting more of a hand lettered look, there's also Madinelette. Madelinette Rustica. So it has like ink splotches and that looks pretty hand done to me. And it also has the alternates that you can Looks use. like you're using a feather pen oh. in the middle of the night next to a candle and you can't see <laughs> what you're doing. Yes. And that's one of the things we try to do when we're making things more hand done is it it can't look perfect. Yeah. And that's what gives it charm. Yeah. So Definitely. So back to our winery, um, they want something that looks like hand lettering that can pair well with the hand done illustration that they got for their labels. So I picked a few different options and we'll just go through them and see how can we customize what's here and get feedback from the chat. Um, See what you guys think too, because we're just doing this together. So I'm just going to copy this so that you can see how much it can change. So this is the original at the top. And then here we have the one that we're going to customize and make already. It obviously has a hand lettering feel, but how can we make it really customized? Gus is in the chat. Hey, Gus. Thank you. Oh, he says he likes my haircut. Short haired Ari. <laughs> That's so nice of you. So we are going to just go through the easiest thing is just to highlight each letter and see what else is there um, yeah. and just start changing things up. Definitely. I think. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Molly. Please. I was just going to say, um, definitely comment in the chat if you used these features before, if you played around with um, the different open type 
features and extra glyphs that some fonts come with. We'd love to hear how that helped you out in your design process. Definitely. So you can see how many G's? There's 14 G's. So G's. Laura Worthington, who designed Adorn Coronet, loves to include tons of alternates in her work. And that helps us a lot because we could do whatever we want here. And chances are it's not going to look like anybody else's version using this font. So I like this one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, let's see how many O's there are. Ooh, look at this O. Wow. I think it's too much, actually. Look, playing with this reminds me of um, Ari and I took a, what was it, hand letter, a flourishing workshop a few yeah. years back together. And Ari was flourishing all over the page while I was like balling up paper and throwing it all over. I couldn't, I couldn't hang. <laughs> I have to leave Ari to the fancy swashes and flourishes. <laughs> <laughs> but you can do it this way. That's true. That's There's true. all kinds of flourishes in here. Yeah. This is perfect for someone like me. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone in the chat done calligraphy or hand lettering before? And do you prefer to do it yourself or to use font? Okay. Yeah. The Y needs to do something crazy. Yeah. It's looking boring compared to the rest right now. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. You had a few glasses um, of wine and you created this why. <laughs> yes. And that's another thing like we're creating for a winery. So maybe we should think about that element. <laughs> <laughs> Make it look like you've been having wine. Okay, so you can see how much more customized the bottom version is. Um, and then obviously we could change, you know, make it into three lines or make it into a shape. So this is just the beginning and it's just showing you how many alternates there are in some fonts. And here's another one. This one is called Compendium. And it's from Sutipos. This one is a lot more refined, I would say. So yeah, just keep that in mind. It's drinking wine, but it's not overdoing it. This is the wine you're having at the wedding, not the wine you're having um, at your movie night with your gal pals. <laughs> Yes. And another thing that you can find in this open type menu. Wow. Look, all of these things are available. There's the stylistic set. So these are groupings of different features that you can turn on and off. So set one, what does it do? It changes everything a little bit. It yeah. adds um, a little exit stroke to the K, a little more swash. It's customizing the text, but taking some of the decisions out of the equation for you. Yes. Let me move this the down because we don't need it. Okay. Set two. Oh, something different. Set three. Ooh, I like the L. I don't know how I feel about that W. Whoa, wait. <laughs> the, uh -oh. the W this where it's nice. all on top. Yeah. This one? Yeah. There's a lot going on. There's a lot happening. Yeah. And that's also a balance of, I think Megan said in the chat, she used to flourish like crazy yeah. when she was young. Yeah. <laughs> I saw Sahar said that whether they use Hand calligraphy depends on budget and mood. So <laughs> I could definitely see that being the case, you know, how many hours you're willing to devote to your flourishing. 
Yeah. Here I turn on the swash item. Oh, so definitely experiment with that open type panel um, and see what happens. But now I'm going to do just one by one and see. <gasps> Whoa. Oh, they have um, flourishes that are corresponding to letters in the glyph panel, I think. So that's why that happens. This is not an L. <laughs> it looks like Wait, you're saying open. giving now. It's like a G. <laughs> Wait, let me go to the L because it just brought me to a flourish. I don't want two L's. Hmm. You know what I could do is use this L, but change it to outlines and just remove mm -hmm. that exit stroke or make it a little lower so that it doesn't interfere. Yeah, you can definitely take cool. these um, alternate glyphs and even tweak them a little more to become your own if you don't like a certain feature of what you're working with. Yeah. Yeah. And then oh, I like that V better too. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Any ends? No, that's not good because we don't want this to happen. That's bad. That's a no no. That's a big, <laughs> big no no. And that's because this N is meant to be probably at the beginning of a word. Um, yeah. It doesn't work as well when it's connected. Okay. That's what certainly something to pay team? attention to when you start playing around with these features. Um, not all of the alternates are meant to flow into each other. So you just, you know, make sure you're picking something typographically sound. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, Penny was saying, I need to rewatch this to write down all of the fonts. Yeah, there's some good choices in here. As I said, this one is called Compendium. The previous one we used was Adorn Coronet by Laura Worthington. And the previous before that was called Madelinette by Tarte Workshop. So... There's some good options. Yeah. Hmm. There's always a balance of making sure you've got some flair, but not too much so yeah. that you can't like read it. Legibility. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> we need to read this. Yeah. That's a better O for sure, though, because it was giving me like a Q before. Yeah. But this is definitely a very fancy, flourished, calligraphic font. Um, perfect for a very fancy wedding invitation or, you know, something where you want it to show that it's an official and fancy event. I don't know if it works well for the winery. Maybe it could be like their reserve Cabernet blend <laughs> and their whoops their logo is something different but when they release that reserve thing they get the special treatment want. yes and yeah. then you can also use um if you go to the type panel and then we find like the flourishes that it has. And then we could add those in as well. It's showing me a different font here because I changed it. So there's so much in here, yeah. oh my gosh. So see all these flourishes? Is it still the Laura Worthington font? No, this is compendium. Oh, right. So look at all the flourishes that come with it. 
It's pretty crazy. <laughs> and then you can add, like, wow. add one of these to, let's see. If we add this, it looks like we did something really special. But I feel like this would be a great way to impress your friends who aren't familiar with open type <laughs> features. You could be like, look at what I made. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that could be a good embellishment for some of the labels, but we don't think it's great for the. Yeah. Main it's not only type. calligraphic fonts that have these features. I think Ari has a few more no, examples not at coming all. up. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm starting with the more calligraphic ones and then we'll show some other stuff. So then we have Timberline from Resistenza Type Foundry. I really like this one because it has this roughness and it really looks handwritten, but it still has a refined quality. So it's a fun one. All right. I think it goes well with the winery name too. Like it has life mm -hmm. in this font and it's the Living Oak Winery. Yeah, it kind of looks like tree bark. Or... Yeah, yeah, the texture is nice. Yeah. So let's see what alternate glyphs we have in this one. Lot. So there's all these L's. Let me see if I like any of these. Oh, that has oh. another. Oh, I think that's an accent. Yeah. <laughs> Never yeah. mind. <laughs> Ooh. Creative. But it kind of <laughs> looks like a fun <laughs> embellishment. Um, let's see. What eyes? They have an eye without a tittle, just in case you want to do like a flourish that interferes with it, which I think is really smart. They have this V. So this V would be more for the beginning of a word. So we're not going to use it, but just to show you a V with a different entry stroke. Lots of G's. Well, it's interesting how that is like disconnected. Yeah, I like that. It's just a different style than yeah. we're used to. Um, if you wanted to, you could use several different alternates for the same character. And when you mix it up like that, it makes it look even more handwritten, you know, because when you're writing, mm -hmm. not all of your letters turn out the same. Yeah, so that's definitely something I would recommend. Um, if you have more than one of each letter, for example, you're writing the word goggles and there's three G's, if you can use three different alternate G's for that, it's going to make it look so much more natural. So, ooh, I like this K, it's cute. <laughs> Yeah. That's cute too. Any other ends? Hmm. That's more of a terminal R. It's starting to look like when you have been writing for too long and your hand gets tired <laughs> <laughs> and you just sort of start scribbling out the letter. <laughs> Yes. So if the client asked me to do this and they're like, do a hand lettering thing. And then I'm like, I got tired at the end. It looks <laughs> so much more believable. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it looks, I mean, if someone showed this to me and I didn't know about this font, I would totally think this is handwritten. I would never guess this is a font. Mm -hmm. They did a really good job making it look rough. Yeah, and everything, and the difference between the G in living and the Y in winery um, mm -hmm. really adds that layer of hand quality. <laughs> yeah, so we have something a little more playful here. 
Chelsea Market script. This is also from Tart Workshop. Um, so this, I don't know, what does everyone think in the chat if this would work for the winery? Maybe we could make it work if we choose. I think the top one, mm, not sure, but if we take out these crazy loops, maybe it'll make it a little more tame. Refined. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Let's see. Mm. So you can see that this font maybe doesn't have as many alternates as ones we've previously been looking at, but um, yeah. still some options to help you be creative. Yeah. So the Y also has that descender that was in the G, but I'm going to keep it like this. So mainly it was like the extra loops. I like this L a lot better. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. This is a little too. It depends. This winery could want a more playful look. Speaking of <laughs> playful, what if we went here? This is the wine offered at Chick Fil A. I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If someone showed you this wine label with this font on it would you think that this wine was delicious? Camille says, this is the type of wine I would drink for movie night. <laughs> Not at the wedding, but at the movie night. <laughs> there are a lot of wine labels, though, that use very creative and crazy type on them. So you never know. But I want to show you with just a little bit of customization, this can look really different. So this has, this is called Chauncey, Chauncey Pro. It's from Chank Diesel. It has this L. It has eyes without that weird um, open tittle. Let's see. It has eyes without any tittle at all. It has one with a little curvy mm -hmm. <laughs> exit stroke. It has a V that's a little more cursive looking, it has an N that's more cursive looking, it has a G. So now it's starting to look a little bit different. This reminds me of when you're like playing around with your own ha handwriting and trying to decide what your personal handwriting looks like. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna yeah. this big tittle, put a heart there. <laughs> yes, when we were like, younger and trying to figure out our personal style. Yeah, exactly. I was telling Ari that I went through a whole phase where my printing had um, a two story A, just so that I was that girl. <laughs> <laughs> you were that girl. I was that girl. So look how different it looks. We went from a very childish, very playful to the point that you wouldn't take it seriously to, I feel like this could work depending on what kind of label it was. Oh, yeah. um, if it was accompanied by an illustration that was very rough and had a certain style that went with this, I think it could work. Yeah. You never know. The difference between the original and what you've created is just like a whole different font. Yes, I created it from scratch. Yeah, she did with her hand, hand lettered. <laughs> it's all hand lettered. It's all hand lettered. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really cool that there's all of this within a font. And a lot of times we just type something out and we're like, oh, I don't really like this. I want like for the E, for example, I've heard a lot of people use fonts or see a font on our website and then write to us and say, I, I like this, but I just don't like the E. So I want to contact the designer to make me a custom version. And we're like, mm. well, <laughs> look through the open type features first, because a lot of times you will find for something like that, or for something like the two story A, usually there is a one story A as well. 
or the G, usually there is a one story G. Yeah. Hearing from, so look through the alternate. I've heard from support that sometimes people will complain, oh, like I saw this font and this letter looks this way on the website, but when I use the font, it doesn't look like that. Um, mm. It's often just an open type feature and they're not aware. An yeah. alternate. Just an alternate glyph. Yeah. So, okay. So I have this one as well, which here is an example of something that is not what it seems when you first look at it. So we've been talking about, oh, um, not open type. We've been talking about hand lettered feeling and like creating something that looks hand done. And in this case, we're veering off of that a little bit. It's more of creating something that looks really customized. So um, in this case, I saw this font and I saw that it had a lot of open type features and that you could do a lot with it. So even though right now we are like, why is she using this? This does not look hand lettered at all. This does not look interesting. It looks great, but not for this topic. But once I just select one letter, you're gonna see what I'm talking about. Look at all the L's people people come on everybody look at this <laughs> look at look at this this is called desire pro and it's by charles borges de Oliveira from gorgeous lettering and design so you can find it on adobe fonts just like everything we're showing and he created this desire pro with a lot of swashes and alternates to be able to make very intricate um lettering composition. It's really great for like a book cover or maybe a wine label. So I thought we would try it and maybe we can just get some votes from the chat. Maybe we can do like a few different versions because there's so much in here Yeah, and see what everyone thinks. So I'm just- See how far you this. can push it, Ari. <laughs> It's going to look totally customized by the end. And the, the reason I'm showing this is the whole concept of this, why does anyone want hand lettering? It's to be unique. It's to have something that wouldn't, couldn't be recreated easily. So the same thing applies here. You could have the same font and same text, but look completely different based on the features that you add and the alternates you use. So although it's not looking like timberline which is super rough and super hand looking it's still giving us something that we can customize and make our own and give a really unique vibe to this right winery well sean says let the flourish fly so i say you take wow. his advice okay there you go <laughs> what these do we have Ooh. <laughs> oh. And look what we can do here. Like I said earlier with the I without the tittle, I can add that in so that the V swash is not interfering with that. Yeah. Because when swashes interfere. That's a no, no. Ah. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. <laughs> okay. What can we do with this? Oh, wow. Ooh, you know what looks cool is this really wide O. Mm. It kind of reminds me of a tree trunk. I don't know. Maybe a cross section of a tree trunk. I don't know how I feel about it in relationship to that swash, though. The G one? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot here. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Oh, I like that better. We do. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah. And we can also change this to be underneath. So it can be three lines. Let's see. Wow. <laughs> I'm just so amazed. You know, it's good when the font is amazing, Ari. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing me. <laughs> Let's 
see. What ends do we have? Ooh. I'm just going to go crazy with this. Oh, God, that's too crazy. <laughs> Rain it in, okay? <laughs> Rain it in. I don't think I can do that. Oh, Ooh. maybe I can do that. Okay. This is one example. <laughs> but look how far we've come from what the original text looked like. Yeah. I think I'm going to make it into three text boxes. Maybe I'll do it with the second one. So I will move these. Oops. Now it's thinking I want to write in compendium. No, but it's okay. I'll fix that. I've heard in the chat from a few people who have used open type features before, but I'm curious if this is new to anyone. Don't be shy. Let us know, you know? Yeah, and if you have any questions, yeah, please let us know. Now is definitely the time to ask. Okay, so now I've put it on three lines. So this will probably lead to more of a locked up design, but it does require a little more care on how the descenders and the ascenders interact with each other. So for example, the descender, this bottom part of the G and the ascender, the top part of the K, those could collide. So we'll have to figure out what the best way is to deal with it. So let's do something different here. Let's see what we can do. Hmm. Oh. I'm so amazed by all the different combinations. <laughs> I like the soundtrack Another of thing. Ari looking for fonts, the little sounds <laughs> she makes. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, Penny says we can all geek out together because we're designers and we love fonts. Yes. It's time to geek out, everybody. If you're a person who gets excited about new fonts and using different fonts, I think this is one of the most exciting things about it is playing around with all these Easter eggs that the designer has left for you. Yes, for sure. Mm. Okay, the chat says we're getting pretty close to a soap opera here, Ari. With your, Ooh, with your choices. Like days of our lives? Exactly, fonts of our lives. <laughs> what Penny says. Like sand in an hourglass, these are the fonts of our lives. Don't let the flourish slip through your fingers. <laughs> Indeed. I don't have a problem with that. You know what? This winery, um, they love drama. Here for it. So it was started by twins who were separated at birth, and then they found each other. And they created a winery together because they realized that even though they were separated at birth, both of them had a passion for wine. Exactly. And then they both married men with the same name and then they got confused about which was which, but then they didn't care because they all loved each other and they all had a fun time at the winery. And then so much more happened, but that's just the first episode. Coming to Netflix this fall. <laughs> Ooh, I could just add that to the top of the Y because I have space. Let's see. How could we make this work? Cody, if it was spilling the wine, the Rolling Stones might have an issue with that. Maybe that's a joke oh, that's that just for me. <laughs> Maybe that's a joke that's just for me. 
<laughs> okay, so you can see how different both of these things can look. And this is before we've really finalized it or, um, well, that doesn't work. Before we've really worked on it. This is just like figuring out what, how far we wanna go. And then we can start making more customization. So we're still working with the font, but we can use a little bit of our, um, expertise now and say, yeah. okay, what if we convert this to outline? And that's totally fine. Just in case you were wondering if there's any issue with making modifications to how fonts look, once you convert them to outlines, there's no issue with that. Because once you convert it, then it becomes just artwork and yeah. it's not a font anymore. Yeah, as long as you're not editing the font software itself, which you'd probably have a hard time doing anyways. Um, you're good to go with making modifications. Yeah. So our romance novel slash soap opera winery, maybe it's a winery where soap opera aficionados can go and have book club meetings about romance novels and mm. drink wine. Norsh wants to know, is it possible to select all the words and choose random alternates and switch between them? So one of the things you could do is the stylistic set, like we talked about before. Um, Molly, do you think that kind of answers the question? Yeah. Um, it sounds like you're looking for a way to randomize the alternates. Um, to keep that maybe handwritten style that we were talking about earlier. I think the oh. sets would probably be the easiest way to start out doing that. Um, there isn't like a randomizer necessarily. No, but what Norsh is asking about would probably be closest to contextual alternate. Oh yeah. We so haven't a really lot talked of fonts, about that, yeah. Yeah, a lot of fonts, and I don't know if it came up um, with the fonts that we use, but a lot of them have contextual alternates programmed in, which means that if you're typing, and I didn't type anything out, so we would have seen it. I just used these specific words that didn't have a lot of repeating characters. But um, if you type things out, it will show different versions of each letter. Um, maybe Coronet will have that. Let me see. I can do it with a Dorn coronet. We might see that. So, it doesn't have, let's see, we turn on. If you have so here's last... one example. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Um, I just turned on the contextual alternates here. And since the this F is at the end of the word. It shows me the terminal exit stroke for the S. So here, before I turned it on, the S was the same version that you would have in the middle of a word. And then when I have it on, it's the terminal S. So that's just one example of contextual alternates. A lot of times they'll also change multiple versions of letters to make it look more handwritten too. Um, and since we only have a couple minutes left, um, we can just jump to like a cooking show, what it could have looked like if we customized this a little more and added it to our wine label. So here's um, a version that I made, but now that we have all this feedback, I think I would change something about this to make it look more like the theme that we talked about. <laughs> like your husband died 10 years ago and recently came back to life. And you have it's to drink the wine. Russian <laughs> Instead yeah, of Russian River so Valley, it's Russian. <laughs> um, it's the Fabio Romance Valley. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
So one of the things I did here, you can see, let me just um, copy this that we created just for one second. So you might be able to see how the descender of the Y was very tight up close to the bottom of the letters and it wasn't really filling in the space that was left mm -hmm. with the K. So I just converted that to outlines here um, and I modified it very quickly. It needs a lot more work, but just to see what it would look like for that descender to come down and fill up more of that space to make it more of a cohesive composition. So this is what it looks like. And if we were to just not even customize the font at all, we would just have this. Wouldn't buy that one, no. <laughs> Same font, but we oh. added all of that. No, that one looked like a good wine. <laughs> so, Thank you everyone for watching that whole process and giving your feedback on all of this. And I hope that you learned a little more about how to customize things and make them look more hand done. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Indeed. If you guys have any feedback or um, ideas, suggestions you want to send to the Adobe Font team, we do have a user voice instance now. You can visit us at adobefont.uservoice.com and submit your ideas. I'm listening. The product team is listening. Um, and so we can hopefully engage with you there. Yes. Great to see everyone and take care and we'll see you next time. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks.